Okay, we can go ahead and start then. Welcome to the Monday, November 16th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky. Liz Pritchett. Hannah Smith. And she. Eric Gilbertson. Steve Everett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Uh, Sparky Potter, Wooden Wood Signs, re representing RK Miles. <laughs> well, good. And before we get started with the first application, Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures? Please. Sorry, I know it's probably boring for all the DRC members, but just in case somebody new is watching over at Orca. All right. So can everybody see this document on their screen? Yes. All right, great. Um, so um, this is for those v viewing the meeting over the Orca Media to let you know that you can participate in the Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform. Um, you can join either by using this link here or you can call into the meeting. Um, for either option, the meeting ID and passcode are here. Um, you can also download the complete meeting packet at this link. And if anybody has problem accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Also, if you're in the Zoom meeting and you're having difficulties while accessing video conferencing features, please message me through the chat function in Zoom. Um, all right, so for a little bit about participation, um, please note that the Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as being streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. Um, public testimony will be taken verbally and the chat function that I mentioned earlier should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, and for those participating by phone, if you call in, um, star six will allow you to mute or unmute. Um, we don't have anybody calling by phone, so I'm going to skip the rest of that about phone. Um, we don't have any public on tonight um, other than Sparky, who's an applicant, um, so I'm not going to go big into details. If somebody calls in, I will go back into some of the other um, ways to participate. But for anybody who is watching, if you do want to call in and join because you have comments or questions, please feel free to do so and you'll be able to speak once the chair calls on you. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. If you are having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. And then if you're having trouble seeing any documents in screen share, all the files, as I said, are uploaded to the agendas and minutes page and available through the link that you can see on your screen right now at point B. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. I'm going to hand this back over to Steve. Moving on, would I would like to hear a a motion to approve the agenda. I move any... to approve the agenda. Do I hear a second? Second. Eric. All in favor of approving the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Anna. Yes. Steve. Okay, the agenda is approved. And without further ado, let's move to the first application for Stonecutters Way, the location of Allen Lumber Company and Sparky Potters here from Wood and Wood to describe the project and his signs. Go ahead, Sparky. 
So the project is ba basically to replace existing signs, for the most part, existing locations, to upgrade to the new owner, which is RK Miles. And uh, so we, we basically reviewed all locations and came up with uh, the two that are, that are most important are the entrance for wayfinding. And then there's, there's a sign that will go over the main entrance. There's an existing sign that would come down. And I chose a new location. There's a piece of the, there's a shed on the north side, um, which is pretty underutilized in that it can help people in wayfinding to find the main entrance, which is a little bit tricky. So when you're coming down the Stonecutters Way, there's now, there now would be a sign there to identify those set of buildings as RK Miles so that people can warm up for what is a tricky right-hand turn uh, when they get towards the main entrance in the parking lot. Sorry, right. if you yep. want me to, I can share the application materials. If, you, if there's anything you want to show or if any of DRC members have questions, I can pull those up. Have, have the members seen any of these images? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, all, they all receive them electronically, but I can also pull them up if there's something particular you want to point out. I, I, are you doing any signs that uh, face out onto 302? Uh, I can't no. remember whether it's signed there now or not. No, well, there was a, there's an existing giant billboard which is no longer allowed, um, so that's not happening. So there, there's there's no representation. There is a big there's a big cow out there, Eric. Though I think this is probably going to stay. This, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I don't know the history of that, but it looks like it's it's going to stay there. But um, no, they, this is uh, the the entire orientation is to really get people into the south entrance um, uh, and. It's pretty familiar territory in that we just chose to replace the existing signs that are, that are there to get you to the parking lot. There's a bunch of other signs that will be coming down that are existing that are no longer needed uh, or, or desired by RK Miles. So there's, a, there's like three or four signs that are just going to come off the walls. So there'll be, there, won't be, there won't be any sign clutter uh, in there anymore. And Mary, as, as far as as far as imagery to show, I mean, uh, they the these sketches are probably you can you've probably all seen these sketches. These sketches are, are the best way to sort of give the orientation um, of what needs what we think is, uh, should happen. Um, and these are these are all um, uh, the square footage has been sort of carefully ascertained through you, Mary, to figure out what they can and can't do from a square footage perspective. There you go. Yep. Yeah. that one yeah so that's coming down yep and you're gonna have a new entry door sign here correct blue um new sign there right so so the sign on, on there. The, the, yeah that's that's the new location that i that i think will be helpful because i think when people are at the co-op they're kind of looking in that direction and Certainly, if people are wondering what those shed buildings are all about, then they'll, they'll have an answer. And we tried all kinds of ideas out. Um, some did not fly, like, like freestanding signs, because that, that's a tricky turn right there. So I was, I was contemplating a freestanding sign that would allow people to see from both directions to that entrance, but, but uh, it was not allowed. So we were settling with what was there. Was there ever a sign on that building that the, the length of it faces, the backside faces the river, so you could see it across the river? Well, that's what we were talking about. That was, that is, there's a billboard there. It's, a, it's you know, yes. it's like 120 square feet or something. Um, I don't, I'm not aware, Steve, if there's anything ever before that, um, but I, I understand the grandfather condition does not apply here. Um, so I don't think that they will be have, be have the square footage to have anything large enough to give you read from across the river. And the, the, and the image that's up on the screen, the Allen Lumber Company, that'll come down. I, the yeah, yes. Im images cover up what it says, so that'll come down. I, I, I would bet that most of the people that go there know where they're going. <laughs> I think you're right about that, Erica. This is this is not going to be not a lot of newcomers. Sparky, what's the size of the lettering on the largest sign that's being placed on the building with RK Miles? Okay, so the copy size is the 
the uh, the M in miles is nine and five eighths inches tall, and the the lowercase letters are six inches tall. So it's not a it's not a giant sign. These are these are basically twenty four square foot signs, and the the north the north side and the south side are the exact same size. Now on the back of that building where the billboard that billboard will be coming down. Will that large billboard facing across the river, will that be coming down? Yes, it will. I, I'm not sure if, I, I think their staff will be taking that down. In fact, I'm sure now, they are. The, I know it's just yeah. not allowed, so it has to come down. If the largest letter in the RK Miles sign is 10 inches, uh, I mean, viewing 10 feet for every inch of sign, that gives you a viewable distance of 100 feet. Would that not give you enough distance across the river to do a 10 or a 12 inch sign to replace the billboard? You mean like something, Steve, that would go on the building? Uh, that's, that's certainly a decent idea. I think 10 or 12 inches might be a little, a little small. It might read. Um, I, I, I would think something in the 16 to, to 18 inch range would definitely read. Um, but that's something that'd be easily, easy to experiment. We just could, could go out there and give it a shot. Uh, I'm not sure if there's enough square footage though left in uh, in what's allowed to RK Miles to do something on that side. Am I wrong about that? Uh, I oh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me because the sign permit attachment that you included didn't give us the uh, amount of signage allowable on the property based on the district. That part didn't get filled in. It doesn't look like. Okay. Is it somewhere else on here. I know I worked it out previously, but it's been yeah. a while, so I yeah. don't have those numbers in my head. <laughs> no, I, I think I think you and Trish worked it out, and I I, I yeah. believe we came away thinking that there was no more square footage uh, that would be allowed under the current regulations. I'll I'll double check it. Sure. Um, especially if if the DRC gives their thoughts on it. Um, but right. normally, you know, we try to we try to make sure everything you're asking for goes before them. Okay. Um, I, I, I I certainly wouldn't object to a sign that was readable. On, out on uh, Barry Montpelier Road. Great. What we, could, what we could do would be to give the option of adding an additional sign similar to the ones you're putting up with RK Miles with a maximum letter size of 16 inches subject okay. to the allowance of total square footage. Great. That'd be super. We're actually doing something like that for St. Johnsbury in their application. There is a sign that has a similar viewing distance. And I think it's, uh, we drew a sign that's like two feet tall by 23 feet wide, and the copy is about that size that I just mentioned. Um, so we kind of have a sign drawn up that could do it, um, but it'd be great. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they'd be thrilled if, if that was a possibility. I, I think that you know, that's a big, a big side of the building, and a, a sign there makes a lot of sense to me. Me too, and there's always been one there. So it's like, it's a, when you drive by, you look across and you go, okay, I get it. Uh, it's well, certainly that, that, less, a little less imposing than the billboard. The billboard is definitely a billboard. It's one of the few left in Vermont, I think. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> well, that's great. What's, so, uh, should, should what's, the si go ahead. what's the size of the sign in St. Johnsbury? I think it's about two foot tall and about 23 feet wide with copy that is approaching 20, 16 to 20 inches. I don't forget. I don't remember. But it's a one liner too. So instead of having RK Miles in their typical logo fashion, we've taken just the RK Miles uh, individual letters and made them all the same size in a, in a one line kind of approach. I'm curious, does the billboard, does it say Alan Lumber? I guess I can't visualize it. It does. It says Allen Lumber, and it also says, um, let me see, it also, uh, yeah, it just says Allen Lumber. It also advertises their showroom. Okay. I mean, I can, I can kind of show it to you. It's right where my finger is. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that is a big one. Okay. Yeah, yeah thank but you. The, yeah, it's, it's a nice facade. It could easily handle a sign. Yes. Um, the cow might have to move over a little bit to make room, but... <laughs> that's, that's a big cow right there. It's just trying. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm curious what the story is of the cow. I did ask that question and did not get a straight answer, so I don't know. I think it might have just shown up there one day. <laughs> <laughs>
But it's not considered a sign, so. Correct. I actually believe Alan Lumber paid to have it painted there. Okay. Okay. What is the, what is the material of your signs? It's a it's a it's a kind of a newer product. It's aluminum that's sandwiched with a, with an acrylic core. It's called one of the manufacturers. It's called Dibon. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a it's a nice material. It's a um, it, it allows you know it's a lightweight material, um, which is its only problem. It doesn't you know you can't use it in heavy duty like wind windy areas. But it's a decent material. It's going to mm -hmm. last a long long time, and it's it's kind of um, or it's, it's inexpensive compared to other ways of preparing uh, sign faces. But if you want to look, it said basically it's two aluminum pieces with it with a core of acrylic. Okay, and the letters are are painted on or glued on. So in all these these formats, they have chosen to have the lettering, the large lettering for RK miles. The RK miles portion of it is going to be cut out of like a half inch or three quarter inch sign foam. The okay. lower copy is all painted on the surface, and the blue is a painted surface. Okay. So it's all, it's an all painted sign basically. So it should all weather at about at the same speed. Okay. Thank you. So there there will be some. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Just a quick question. The one size sign was 40 inches high by 86 inches long. Yes. What was the size of the larger lettering on that sign, the miles? That's that's the one that's big. Well, they, there's two signs that are that size. It's the north and south sign. So it's, they're right. both cl closing in on 10 inches tall. Okay. The one that, that, that goes over the front door, um, those letters are six and a half inches tall for the M and four inches tall for the R. If, if you were proposing one for the, to be viewed across the river, what would be on the sign? Just RK Miles or RK Miles building materials? I think it'd be just RK Miles and it would be on a blue background with white copies so it could actually be seen from across, across the, the river. Individual cutout letters is another way to do it um, but I think their their branding is pretty strong in the blue world, and so I think they probably would prefer to have a blue background with the, with the applied white copy. Oh, the contrast makes it very readable. It's exactly. Yeah. This is so much that most of the signs we review are downtown, where it's a very different situation, and the, this is a big building. Yeah. You know, and. and uh, new people looking for it are uh, going to have a hard time if there's not a sign on the river. Uh, well, I would agree. I would agree with you. Uh, we we uh, we assisted uh, with Caledonian Spirit, Spirits and Bar Hill, and uh, so that we worked hard to get their logo um, big enough to be facing across the river, and it is recognizable and very viewable from across the river. They chose to go with their logo versus going with the uh, cut out copy. With 16-inch lettering, what would be the largest sign size to accommodate that? Say two feet or three feet by what? Well, I mean, if it, so if it's 16 inches tall, I think that the, the background of the sign panel would need to be at least two feet, maybe two feet and change, maybe 30 inches, something like that. So, um, but I mean, if there's, if there's, if the town is going to give more space to them, um, I'm sure that they would they would be they would love it. For example, if you went from a from a 16 inch letter, which is this is this, which is you know a good size letter, um, to a 20 inch letter, which is this, then you'd probably want to have a, a more like a 30 inch um, plaque behind it. I could actually send you over the drawing that we've done for uh, for St. Johnsbury. Um, it's you know it hasn't been approved yet, but it, it's done, and we can send it so you can see what that looks like and the relationship of of that the, the distance you know across the railroad tracks over Hill and Dale. It's the same kind of thing. What what we could do would be to as long as it's the same motif as the other RK Miles signs, we could just give you an option to add a sign on that size, say up to thirty inches by. 20 feet subject to the limitations on the site. Okay, that'd be great. It might be a little bit wider than 20 feet. It might be more like 23, 24 feet. 
and it would be made in sections. It'd just be basically, you know, you'd take these, these sections and put them up, uh, you know, in eight foot sections, but across the river, you'd never see that. And then again, a 16 inch letter is actually visible from probably 160 feet, according to the one inch per 10. Right. If you were to walk out of Shaw's supermarket door and look across the river or across the street, across Main Street, so the mm -hmm. Sarducci sign is very readable from that distance. And that's okay. 200 and some odd feet and their signs 12 inches high. Oh, really? Good to know. Great. So, so okay, so th then this th these parameters sound, sound good. Um, I think I think anywhere in that range would work. My, you know, certainly my experience with with um, distance reading, especially if you're in a car driving by, you, you get that kind of that one glance at it. And uh, so I think the in some respects, the bigger it is, the better um, for that potential to read well. Uh, for example, the, the the lettering that it was currently on that billboard, the A has got to be uh, the A's got to be, I don't know, 30, 30 inches tall. I bet. I didn't go out. I didn't go out and measure it because you'd actually fall in the river if you tried to go out and measure that thing. <laughs> Pretty steep <laughs> bank there. Um, Sparky, this is Meredith. Um, so I just did some quick calculations. Um, and maybe there was a maybe between Trish and Audra, there was some debate as to what how we factored in the wall signage allowance. Okay. But. Based on what I just did, if the numbers off that site plan, if I got those right, you're looking at over a hundred square feet of wall signage allowance. So okay. you only have right now. You just have the three signs that you're proposing, right? Yes. Or well, there's the yeah, because customer parking is directional, so that wouldn't count towards total wall signage. Yeah. So you've got. Uh, what two 24 square feet and one 10 square feet. Yeah. So that gives you room for another sign on the back to face the river for sure. Right. How okay. much square footage is left? Um, if my numbers are right, and I'll, I'll want to go back over it with Trish, but I think they have a total allowance of 135 square feet and they've used less than 75. They've used less than 60 square feet. Cool. Because you're taking so, off all the other signage. We are, yeah. Right. Um, is the is the hold on? There's the um, oh, what's that one there in the end? The north the north end. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna pull this back up. My share screen. There was the like the showroom sign. Is that that's coming gone, off? That's gone. Yeah. Okay, that's gone too. Then yeah. Actually, RKMOs did not want it. They didn't figure they, they, they needed it. And they, okay. this, this is a great conversation because we it ended me, being that someday they'll talk about a sign that could go across the river and ask for a variance. So this is great that you're bringing this up. Yeah, I, I'll I'll make sure that Trish and I are really, really clear on what counts of, as a facade because um, she and I had this conversation about Caledonia spirits, but I think she mm -hmm. and Audra discussed it about the RK Miles location versus Trish and me. So... Okay, Sometimes that comes out. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So if, the, really if the total is 135 less 60, that gives you 75 square feet remaining. Yeah. That sounds about right. I yep. mean, that's, that seems like plenty of square footage for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. You and again, again, we'll, we'll give that as an option. Okay. So you, you can do it, but you're not required to. Certainly. Right. So the, the one in St. Johnsbury is actually, you know, more like 50, 60 square feet. So this is, this is great. This is work great. Thanks, Eric, for bringing this up. Does anyone have any other questions, comments, or suggestions to any of the other committee members regarding the sign application? I have a question for down the road. Uh, RK Miles has chosen not to talk much about lighting these signs. Uh, and I was going to return to them and, and suggest that at least the signs that is, is on the south entrance uh, uh, should have lights on it because that, you know, it's dark by four o'clock right now. 
Um, so I, uh, is there anything that, that would prohibit them from having um, lighting on the shed you know, above the main entrance on the south side? Not, not, not the entrance door, but the actual the shed wall. You know, the so there's nothing. Lighting, would you suggest? Well, I think I would certainly. This, this is the location I'm, I'm speaking of right here. I would suggest basically an, an LED fixture that is this is a singular fixture that we've used a lot of, and we you goosenecks off the building about two and a half or three feet. It'd be easy to to light that that wall uh, and the sign below it very nicely. So, and the fixture is about you know, about yay by yay. It's just it's not huge, but it has a. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's a it's a delightful fixture in that it, the, the light is, is not blue. It's kind of nice. It's got a nice warm white to it, um, and it just reads very well. Would that be a single gooseneck? Yes, it would be. Now there are linear fixtures, as you know, they can they can go out there like six foot or you know eight foot linear fixtures. But I don't think it's necessary in this particular arena. They're also a heck of a lot more expensive too. So just a single black gooseneck with an LED bulb? Yes, and it's about seven inches by five inches by three inches is the, is the fixture itself. And I can easily send, send photographs of what it looks like at night and what it looks like at, in, in the daytime. So for the for the zoning permit part, outside of the design review part, I would need to get um, a copy of the specs. Yeah. And um, information on how many lumens yeah. the bulb would be emitting, and what other light fixtures are on the site, because that'll trigger it over into because changing the light fixtures right. triggers it into an administrative site plan permit. Right, right. So I will ask them that question. I'm not sure what their plans are for the rest of the okay. lighting. The only other, you know, where the, where the front door is, there they'll change a bulb, and there's already a, you know sort of a can light okay. there. Um, so this is the only location. I don't think the north side would really warrant it, um, uh, but I don't know what they're going to be doing for, for sort of ground lighting or wall lighting. So I'll ask that question. Awesome. Meredith, could we give the option for a single gooseneck subject? Yeah, you can do that under the approval. Yeah, you can do that as a for a design review approval, um, and then that way that'll roll over. I think that works out. Works well. I was just trying to figure out a way to do it so he didn't have to come back. Yep, exactly. Thank, thank you, Steve. You, you can do that, and then we can always, we'll just roll it in and hold off on the actual permit for a little bit till we get the details on the light. Okay. Any other committee members have any suggestions regarding the lighting? I, I just want to make a comment. I'm not usually an advocate for signs, but this is such a huge building that I think it looks silly without good signage. Well, to, to your point, Eric, I think now that I've, I've heard that there might be 75 square feet remaining, um, I would I would be uh, thinking about going back to the main sign of the south entrance and increasing the size of that sign um, because it is it is the, the, the main entrance. The, the north side, I think, is fine, but that particular sign could grow um, and be uh, maybe a better fit in terms of scale um, on the, that big shed building. So that's a good point. In other words, instead of having 40 inches by 86 inches, maybe it becomes, you know, you know, five foot by, you know, eight and a half feet or something like that. Because um, I think that would certainly uh, be be closer to the, to the size of the existing sign that's there. We were under the impression that we could not exceed 24 square feet for any one sign. Um, so we, we, we scaled it down. Well, I, I, I don't want to say I approve anything that's against the regulations, <laughs> but I, 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 you know, it's, it's a big building, it's a big operation and Um, so just, Sparky. Just just figure if you increase the size of that sign, it reduces your what's remaining for the sign over the river. Yeah, what I thought I'd do, Steve, is kind of figure out that sign first and see you know, what, what would be necessary for that to, to really read and see if there's okay. anything left over, you know, if there's any square footage left over. So, Sparky, just a reminder that for each individual, so you have your total wall sign 
um, allowance, right? Total wall yep. sign. But for each individual sign, you have to look at the facade on which it is being placed. Mm -hmm. And the sign can only, the max width of each individual sign is 80% of that one facade. Gotcha. So you do have, especially with your, your more, your narrower facades on some of these signs, your width is reduced. Got it. Thank you. Yep. I don't think we're, we're approaching those margins, though. I don't think so either. I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. But Meredith, so we're not limited to 24 square feet for any one individual sign, it sounds like. It's no. basically, you get 135 square feet, you slice it and dice it how, what best works for the building. Okay. Yep. Yeah. What's the designated location for that sign you're thinking of enlarging? It's on the south, the south entrance. It's the, it's this one, right here. Okay. Right now, yeah, right now there's an existing sign that's just you know, very large. It's this the what's there right now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. That one? Yeah. So right now. That would look, let's see, that's, you said it's a south facade, so that is, oh. Yep. What's the size yeah. of the, Sparky, what's the size of the island lumber sign that's there now? Uh, let me see. It is, um, let me see. The small sign is 31 inches by, by eight feet. The sign above for Allen Lumber is actually 52 inches tall by about 10 feet wide. It's a big sign. So this this one that's going up there would be pretty small by comparison. Yeah, I, I don't think the one that's there is too big. For so no. that building, I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree. Well, we... We can do is just say we you could increase size of the proposed the, of the proposed sign at that location to up to the size the square footage of the existing sign. Sounds fair to me. But then, but then you have to balance that out with the size of the sign facing over the river. Correct. And of the two, of the two choices, the one of the river would really have to read well, otherwise it'd be kind of a mistake. Um, and, and so I, I think that I would, I would pay attention to that first. Okay. Again, with the, with the existing application, you had a total of 60 square feet, you had left 75. So a three foot by 25 foot sign would give you your 75. Right, and it's possible that that sign could, you know, I'll, I would, I'm going to just look at it and see if it can be more like a, a, a two foot by, by 20 foot sign and still do it to its job. Because you don't really need that much more square footage. Um, you need another four or maybe eight square feet to make the south side sign similar in size to what's already there. Uh huh. Now, what this probably means, I mean, we, we in the last, next couple of days, we can certainly redraw these concepts, and then we need to resubmit the, the whole proposal back to you. Um, just to me. Just to you, okay. Just to me. So, again, it can be administratively approved so you don't oh, have great. to come back before another meeting. Okay. Does anyone else on the committee have any, again, comments, questions, or suggestions? <clears throat> if not, I can start going through the criteria. There's a criteria sheet that all the projects are evaluated by. Okay. One. 
under all projects, one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations on existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building and other properties in the district. Additions to existing buildings shall respect and be comparable with size, scale, materials, detailing. Additions, including signs, shall not obscure or undermine essential form and character of the original building. It should reflect the additions and style as appropriate. And that's acceptable. And then there's some one down below for signage. And this has to do with removing a sign. When removing a sign, evidence of the sign's installation must be re removed to the greatest extent possible. And that's acceptable. And most of these locations, you're replacing an existing sign with a new sign. Steve, does that mean, uh, for example, repainting a background if there's shadowing or anything left over? OK. OK. As much as possible. Okay. And I, you know, and, and in certain spots, you're certainly finding fading from age and sunlight. Right. And there's another that would apply in this particular outdoor lighting fixtures, including lighting of the sign. Uh, Structural design of outdoor lighting is compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and the lighting for the sign, the gooseneck is acceptable in that location. Okay. And then there's specific to signs. There's a set of the evaluation criteria, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties, that's acceptable. Where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures, the location here is acceptable and you're replacing many of the locations where there's an existing sign. It's recommended that sign placement be centered over entries, acceptable. Sign installation shows damage to character defining materials on the building. That's certainly acceptable here. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. That's acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. That's acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity or cover or impact character defining architectural features. That's acceptable. And then lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels an illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively, acceptable with a gooseneck. And that's acceptable. So based on the application and the review, and again, the options for the applicant are to install a single black gooseneck with an LED bulb subject to administrative approval there's also an option to increase the sign at the entrance to a size not to exceed the existing Allen Lumber sign, which is again, 52 inches by 10 feet. And then there's also the option to put a sign on the side of the building facing the river so that it's again, within the overall limits of sign square footage and against subject to administrative approval. All in favor of the application based on those, speak your names. This is Martha, I say yes. Yes, yes. Hannah says yes. Eric says yes. And says yes. And Steve says yes. So it is approved. Well done. It was, it was very educational. You guys are thorough and good. 
Um, Thank you. So, so Sparky, um, I will get you those recommendation forms that Steve walked through and you'll see where his okay. signature is on them. We'll need your signature or somebody else from Wooden Woods on that to confirm that you agree with the recommendations and the changes. Okay. And then we'll finalize the lighting details and um, any sign changes that comply with those recommendations. Once we get that all squared away, we'll be able to issue the permit, but we need to get those details. We would need to submit to you probably a drawing a front side profile of the light fixture as well as the other changes as well. So yeah. some more drawings will be coming your way. Perfect. Great. And we, I would think before the end of this week, we can get you what, what, what we just talked about. Okay. Great. And uh, just, just I guess so I can get back to Amanda at RKMLS. Does that, uh, uh, what, what is it, the, the timing process in terms of days or weeks before they would get permits? Um, hopefully it would just be a few days. We're, right. we're, we're in a little bit of flux. I mean, next week is Thanksgiving week. Um, sure. And we're also, with the latest news on COVID, we're shifting to a lot fewer staff in the office at any one time. Right. Um, we're hoping to still be working the same number of days, but with people flexing between being here and being home. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll do the best we absolutely can. But the, the permit issuance is through a computer program. So sometimes if that's having hiccups and the right. you know, the program guru isn't here, it really right. takes a little bit. So um, as far as yeah. fees go, is there I know there'd be a fee for another sign on this on the uh, riverside. But uh, there'll still be an increase in fees there. But then the light fixture, is there a fee that would come with the light fixture? Um, I'll, I'll, we can follow up with that via email. But there is, that's going to, because that's going to trigger administrative site plan, I think. I've got to go back to the fees and see what Audra charged. Um, okay. Uh, that might be an added fee. But I, just, I need to go into the, the program and see what was charged to begin with. Okay. Sounds fair. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much. And th thanks for thinking outside the box. That's it's really helpful for these folks. Well, I know that they're moving in. They're opening their doors, I guess, tomorrow. So it'd be helpful to have a sign indicating who, who's really there now. Yeah, I, it's interesting. They, they, uh, they're not terribly worried about it because they think the transition is something that they're, they're comfortable with. You know, Alan Lumber and the RKML is kind of living, you know, kind of as kind of one for a while. But, uh, they, they were they're very they're very patient very thoughtful so and they did more eliminating of signs than they did adding so that was i thought that was good too like i said before probably many of the customers aren't going to notice that there are no signs there <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they're going to come regardless of a sign or not yeah. yeah that's great well thank you sparky it's good to see you again good to see you too yep. steve thanks, thanks nice meeting you okay. nice meeting you too okay and good luck right. with your projects Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And if you're ever in Waitsfield, just knock on the door. We'd love to have you guys come in and see our, our candy store. So, <laughs> Okay, awesome. thank you. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. To review the minutes for the November the 2nd meeting, has everybody had a chance to look at those minutes? Yeah, I'd move approval. I, I had a question. Um, when we're talking about the skinny pancake situation, the last line there, it would be concealed to blend into the background of the building. Um, I wasn't really clear about what that means. Um, I think it would be more appropriate to say that the applicant anticipates that it could be painted to go to blend in. Um, concealed is kind of, um, it, it's not clear about what they're actually anticipating. Yep, sorry. Uh, that's good. That's a good suggestion. Way at the mm -hmm. bottom. Yeah. Yep. Last yep. Sorry. I just, it's been a while since I've looked at these. Um, yes, painted. Be painted to blend into the background. Yeah. Yes. No, yep. that sounds yeah, much better. Yeah. It's certainly Thank more accurate. Uh, the other just minor point that I would suggest you guys consider is these minutes, I missed it, um, has Ben in as an alternate. He's no longer an alternate. So take well, that congratulations, out. Ben. <laughs> so I think that I'll move that that should be eliminated, his reference as an alternate.
Do I need to second that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I will. It is easily approved. <laughs> <laughs> What is it the legislature does by unanimous consent, right? Yes. And so the minutes, minutes are approved. Well, with those two changes, I, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you've made your motion. Do I hear a second? I second. Okay, good. All in favor of the minutes with those changes, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Hannah. Ben. Steve. It's unanimous. Meredith, have you heard anything about the skinny pancake? I haven't heard anything back yet. I know that they're... Um, conferring with Montpelier Alive about how, what to do, you know, what they might be able to do on that new vent location. Um, and, but I don't know if they've gotten confirmation that that would work um, technically, that location. No, I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Eric, I just realized I think we forgot to put the HPC CLG grant update in other business. I'm sorry, that was my oversight. I didn't know. If, just a reminder. I didn't know if you wanted to bring Go that ahead. up. Go ahead. You can know. update it. You know oh. more about it than I do. <laughs> um, Eric, are you re or Steve, are you ready for other business? Yes. That's okay. the next thing on the agenda, so go right ahead. Okay. Um, so... Uh, we are, the HPC is working on their, um, on a grant application. We're, we're close to getting that filed to get some money for a consultant to work on the design review guidelines. So that's the big step. The application deadline for that is December 7th. Um, you know, if, if we get that grant approved and can pull together under f other funding, then working on those design review guidelines would probably move forward pretty rapidly. Um, so any input you have on that within the next you know, month or two would really be helpful, especially if there's particular um, sections of the design review guidelines that are design review regulations that you would prefer to prioritize in developing guidelines. Like, do you want guidelines for all projects? Do you want guidelines focusing on windows and doors first? Because there's a possibility that we'll only get enough funding to do part of the project at a time and have to do it in stages, in which case we would want to do the illustrated guidelines for the things that um, either you have the most trouble, you know, figuring out with the new regulations, or you think that um, applicants would have the most trouble figuring out. And I mean, Steve and Ben, I think you have a lot of experience with that is looking at it from applicants perspectives. Um, and trying to explain things to lay people. So if you could look at it with that eye, that would be really helpful. Um, you know, money's, money's tight these days um, in city government. So I, I am anticipating that probably we'll need to do this in stages. Um, so any thoughts you have on that would be great. And any, if there's any buildings that you think are amazing examples of design here in Montpelier or bad examples in other towns, let us know because we're going to want to take photographs um, to illustrate the guidelines as much as possible. And yeah, we don't want to put up any bad, what we think are bad projects in Montpelier. <laughs> we want to go, go somewhere else to get those. We don't want an applicant coming in front of us to and looking at the guidelines and seeing their own building and there's a bad example of design. Uh, that's not good PR. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think tonight and, was, and it would, it, it might reflect on bad mistakes from previous <laughs> design review, oh, yeah, and yeah. development just, review committees. <laughs> the, I thought tonight was a really good example of how 
constructive design review can be. And, you know, a, a good example, and we got to remember it, that if we need a letter or anything from Sparky, because uh, everybody made good suggestions on those signs. I mean, it would, I think it made a difference. We just didn't rubber stamp it or anything. A little customer testimonial on the design review committee Absolute. website. Absolutely. All, all, we could use all the good PR we get too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A Yelp review? <laughs> does, oh, that'll anyone, be does anyone have any other business at this point? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved, Eric says. I'll second so, that, Liz. Okay, all in, for, in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Liz. Anna. Oh, you're muted, Ben. <laughs> ben. And Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Steve. Have Thank, thanks, December everybody. December. Good to see you. you. Have a good Thanksgiving. We won't meet again yep. until December 7th. Okay. Pearl yes. Harbor Day. Okay. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Bye all.